Welcome everyone to our Wednesday Bible study. I'm glad you are with us as I send you greetings from the Hickory Knoll Church of Christ as we're striving to continue living the life of faith and and loving the Lord and, and loving each other as we are still trying to adapt to these uh, new uncertain uh, times. We are going to continue this evening in our study in the book of Philippians. We're going to be in Philippians chapter number 2, verses 1 through 11. As I've mentioned before, each of these lessons are standalone. You don't necessarily have to have had seen or viewed the, the previous lessons, uh, but if you uh, go back and, and search through, you could certainly find them. And, and as we've had a few from chapter 1, and, and today we'll, we'll be in uh, the first 11 verses of Philippians chapter 2. Uh, Paul is writing from prison and he is writing on big themes throughout this book including joy and uh, unity and and uh, also humility as uh, as well and and today our Bible class is titled Running on Empty. All right and hopefully that will make more sense as we uh, go along. I'm in Philippians chapter number two, beginning in verse number one. Paul writes, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should not only look only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same that of Christ Jesus, who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. The ESV, English Standard Version, says, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Verse 8, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Paul's teaching us quite a bit of, about humility, and he utilizes Jesus as our as the perfect example, and and we want to make sure we're trying to, to model our lives after Christ. Now as we think about uh, the idea of running on empty. <laughs> uh, the, the, verse number seven, but Jesus emptied himself. Now, uh, we, uh, we all know what it's like to, uh, to feel exhausted, uh, to feel overwhelmed, and uh, may even uh, have this uh, mentality or this utilizing the metaphor of drive around uh, in our car without any gas. We've all driven on, on empty, right? You've been there and and uh, you know you need to get gas. You know you're running out of gas. You're you're looking at uh, trying to figure out is this gas gauge exactly uh, accurate? How many more miles do I have? Can I can I go home and then get gas tomorrow morning? Do I need to stop right now? Can I go after I get to where I need to go? I'm in a hurry. I'm in a rush, and uh, I'm running on empty. Uh, a fellow by the name of Robert Phillips a while back wrote a poem uh, titled "Running." On empty. As a teenager, I would drive father's Chevrolet cross county, given me reluctantly. Always keep the tank half full, boy, half full, you hear. The fuel gauge dipping, dipping toward empty, hitting empty, then thrilling, way below empty, myself driving cross county. Mile after mile, faster and faster, all night long, this crazy kid driving. The earth's rolling surface against all laws, defying chemistry, rules, and time, riding on nothing but fumes, pushing luck harder than anyone pushed before. The wind screaming past like the furies, 
I stranded myself only once, a white night with no gas, gas station open, 90 miles from nowhere. Panicked for a while at standstill, myself stalled. At dawn, the car and I both refilled, but Father, I am running on empty still. Now, some of us may feel as if we're running on empty. We are exhausted. Our uh, motivation is gone. Our excitement is gone. Our, our energy level is gone. Those uh, days seem like they just drag on and on. And uh, you may feel as if you're going to uh, get stranded at, at any point in your life and, and in your relationships. Well, a lot of times uh, the reason why uh, our tanks are always empty uh, is because what we're filling our tanks with, our life tanks, our, our, uh, who we are and, and what we're striving uh, to do. And, and I challenge us as we're looking at this passage in Philippians 2 tonight to think about uh, what is it that you are filling your tank with? Uh, are you filling your tank with selfishness or are you filling your tank with humility? Uh, if, if, we're, if we're filling our tanks with nothing but selfish wants and desires, then uh, it's not going to be very long before we, <laughs> we burn that fuel quicker than anything else and we're going to be empty all over again. This world sells this idea of me, myself, and I and and uh, that myself as an individual, that the world needs to revolve around me. And that is a formula for constant burnout, for constant fatigue, to always feel uh, empty. All right. So you're, you're running on empty. And so uh, what are you, what are you going to do? Okay. So one option is to, to fill up your tank with nothing but your, with yourself all over again, all your wants and all your desires and, and all of your selfish ambitions. I, I want what I want and I want it right now and I'll do whatever it takes to get what I want. Well, if that's the case, if that's our tendency, Philippians 2 verse number 7, we need to empty ourselves. It's not that we're neglecting ourselves. Don't misunderstand the point of the passage. But uh, Paul says, yeah, we need to look out for our own interests. For That's the first part of verse 4. But also the interest of others as well. We need to start thinking about ways to empty ourselves and fill our lives with the needs of others. So next time you're thinking about what you're going to fuel up with, uh, are you going to to fuel up with uh, what I want, what I desire, I need this, I want that, and focus on what you want. Okay, that's one option. Or, as you're emptying yourself and as you're thinking about, okay, what am I going to fill my life with? What am I going to fill my tank with? Well, starting to think about the needs and the interests of others. My I'm going to fill my life tank up with things. The, my spouse needs this. My kids need this. My parents need this. My coworkers need this. My neighbor needs. My liberal friends need. My conservative friends need need my older people in the, my life need the younger people in my life need the new christians need the longtime christians need you see when we start thinking about how we can fill our lives not with what our own wants are but with the needs of others then we're going to see uh, several things. Uh, as Paul's mentioned here in the first few verses of chapter 2, we're going to see more unity amongst the church, amongst each other, because not everybody's just worried about themselves. They're concerned about other people. And then number 2, verse 5, 
it's going to help with our attitudes as well. Has anyone ever told you you need to have an attitude check <laughs> or you need an attitude adjustment? You need to check your attitude. What's wrong with your attitude? And the, mo the people that have the most difficult time with their own attitude are the ones who are thinking mostly and I would say nearly entirely about themselves. The people that are most frustrated, the people that are most exhausted, the people that are most disappointed, the people that are the most resentful, the people that are the most greedy, the most unforgiving people. All of those items are connected to one thing, and that is focus on selfish ambitions. But when we swallow our pride and humble ourselves, when we empty ourselves of, of just simply wanting what we need or what we want and what we desire, and we start looking out for the interests of others, we're going to see a change in our attitude and we're going to see a change in the sense of unity, unity in the church, unity in our marriages, unity with our, in our families, a sense of working together in our communities, a sense of working together in our, our neighborhoods, in our social groups, in our workplaces, wherever there are groups of people that are focused on the needs of others, attitudes will change and unity will occur. Back uh, during my uh, days in, in college, one of the social clubs I was involved with had a motto, um, the, the secret of joy was, uh, and this was not unique to our social club, but it, it was one of our themes, that, that joy comes as a result of Jesus first, others second, yourself last. A lot of times people have that backwards where yourself is first. All right. Now, again, we're not neglecting ourselves. The greatest command, what are the two greatest commands? Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. You're not hating yourself. You're not neglecting yourself. In fact, if you don't take care of yourself, you're not going to be able to take care of others. We're not talking about just burning out by, by never focusing on taking care of yourself. The point is some folks all they want to do is think about themselves to the point where they're never thinking about the needs of others. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceits. But in humility, consider others better than yourselves. I really do believe that when we empty ourselves and then fill our tanks with the needs of others, we're going to see that we're going to be able to to, to keep on driving a whole lot longer. We're not going to get stranded emotionally and relationally. We're not going to get stuck spiritually in our relationship with the Lord and with the church, but we're going to be able to keep keep on keeping on. We're going to be able to, to move forward in our lives. We're going to be able to grow in a deeper faith and in a stronger relationship with uh, others. Jesus emptied himself, he humbled himself, and was obedient to the will of the Father in heaven. That's what it's all about. How is it to make sure that we are running, that we do not get burned out, that we do not get stranded in our lives? Is to empty ourselves and to then fill our tanks with the word of the Lord's and this desire to truly swallow our pride and to consider the needs of others. I hope this has been helpful to you. More next time. We'll continue in chapter 2 of Philippians. Until then, take care. God bless. And let me know if there's anything I can do to help you.